Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch with some belated news. Now this one actually happened about two weeks ago, but hey, better late than never when it comes to something like Raylib. Yes, Raylib 5 was shipped. I happened to be in Europe at the time, so I didn't cover this when it happened, but it's better late than never. So here we go. Raylib just released two weeks ago. Uh, so we're going to jump in and take a look at what exactly is in Raylib 5. There is a lot to be excited about here, but first I'm going to explain exactly why I love Raylib in general. And that's because this is a cross-platform C-based library for creating games. And if you've worked with C or C++, you know normally find it is a bit of a challenge. Well, I'm going to show you how fast you can get up and running the samples in Raylib. And this is just absolutely great for beginners. So if you're looking for an introduction to C or C++ programming, or by the way, pick a programming language, because let's scroll on down here. There's your platforms, which is basically all of them. And there are your languages, and there are over 60 sets of bindings. So you can use these in C Sharp, in uh, Python, Lua, whatever language you want to work with. It probably has Raylib bindings. All right, so we got our project downloaded. Let's go over to our download folders. We run the installer. By the way, you can you don't need the installer. So if you don't want the bundled compiler and Notepad++ install, uh, you can do this using the um, uh, straight up uh, libraries that are available on uh, GitHub if you wish. So if you're more experienced with C, you don't need to download the installer. One major annoyance, you can't change the path. That drives me nuts. I absolutely hate when things put themselves in a fixed path. Uh, by the way, while you are installing this, you've actually got this little game you can play. So I'm using the WASD keys and then the arrow keys to look and you're running around looking for files in this maze while it goes ahead and installs. Now how many of your development tools have a game to play while the installer works. Now, one of those things to be aware of, the installer is basically just copying files into a folder. So if you want to go ahead and move it after the fact, you can easily do that as well, by the way. So uh, the only thing it's going to do is going to create a, a shortcut on my desktop, and that's about all you need to update after the fact. Now, I'm not going to sit here and have you watch me watch this play this game, especially because I suck at maze games, so you'd just be watching me play it badly. So I will resume once the install is done. All right, we're coming to an end here. By the way, Raylib is free and open source, open under GitHub. I believe it's MIT license. It's either that or Apache. It's one of the very uh, permissive licenses in terms of what you can do. And boom, here it comes. All right, so Raylib is successfully installed. If you go to your desktop, you will now find this notepad plus plus for Raylib uh, demo there. And this is, uh, I think, one of the first things you're going to want to do is come in here, go to settings, go to preferences, go to dark mode, and turn dark mode on. That's a Notepad++ thing, by the way, not a Raylib thing. So here you are in a Raylib sample. So you can see some of the, the code here. It's very... Um, Easy. It's actually been inspired by uh, Borland graphic libraries from ages and ages ago, if you're an orb font like myself, and uh, XNA, uh, so Microsoft's um, awesome cross-platform framework. So those were some of the inspirations for the design of this guy. You see here, straightforward code. Uh, it's, it's a great way to actually learn C if you're interested in it. And then once you're up here and you're editing your code, just hit F6. little dialog will pop up. Click OK. Uh, it will run the integrated compiler and run your example. And that's it. That's all you need to do to get up and started. So if you've ever worked with C or C++, like if you want to start learning like SFML or SDL or one of these other entry-level frameworks, you have to learn the compiler, the linker, the editor setup, all that. This one, literally, you just bring up some code and run it. So here we'll go ahead. Uh, all this stuff is, all the examples are organized into a uh, single file. So here we're C colon, Raylib, Raylib. Examples, you're going to find there are an absolute ton of examples. You want to bring up here the 3D models here, uh, animation. All right, boom. So here is the code for handling animation like so. And once again, just load up that single file, hit the F6 key, hit the OK key, and it will use the integrated tooling to get you up and going. And here you can see our model, press space, and it will animate the model. So uh, just one of the various examples that are available. By the way, if you head back over to raylib.com, you're going to find there are a absolute ton of examples available. And this is probably how you want to go about starting to learn Raylib, uh, which is, again, a very accessible uh, framework. And it's available for uh, whatever game engine or, sorry, whatever platform you want, whatever uh, language you want. It's got bindings for it. It's got an absolute ton of examples. By the way, these all work in WebGL, so you can actually check them out in the browser if you wish. Uh, so yeah, that, ladies and gentlemen, uh, is the examples that come with Raylib available all entirely online. So you can go ahead and check out what this framework is able, able to do. Now, the key thing about Raylib is it is very modular. That's the other thing I really like about it. It's if you want to use just a piece of Raylib, so say, example, you want to use like a, a, the GUI aspect or the image loader or whatever, it is broken up into these various different libraries. And basically, most of the libraries are single header file only. So what that means if you're working with C is you create your own new project 
object, instead of having to set up a library and all that stuff, you literally just have to bring in that one header file and include it, and you are good to go. No, no messing about with the linker. Again, it makes everything very easy to work with. So you got another things like RayGL, Math, Audio, GUI, uh, PNG handling or ping as I know people love when I say that and the resource handling stuff and we've also got a number of tools in here as well a variety of different things included and yeah and there's a there's a very active community by the way uh, so if you want to learn more just go check out their discord server very uh, friendly group of people here uh, your features again this is the big one so even if you're going to work with, uh, so you're going to find if you're just starting with C or C++ and you work with a library, what you're going to find is, oh, crap, my library has a dependency on this library. And then I got to download this library that that one has a dependency on. And then you find yourself spending like seven hours setting up the linker. Raylib has no external dependencies at all. So you literally, you just download Raylib, link it into your project, and you are good to go. By the way, if you decide to go that, that route instead, you're going to find the wiki available here. So for example, if you're working with Windows, you can download a Visual C, a Visual C or G. GCC versions of it, uh, and there's setups here on basically instructions on how to get up and going if you want to go that route. So if you don't want to use Notepad++ in the installer, you can download it as a library and grab it that way. Speaking of which, let's get on to the Raylib 5 side of things. So here it is up on GitHub. Uh, again, I mentioned, oh, I was wrong, Zlib. So it's not Apache, not MIT, it's Zlib license. Again, one of the very permissive ones. So I, I don't really draw a big distinguishment between those, but Zlib license is a permissive license. Um, so just one of those things to be aware of, you can pretty much do what you want with this library, just a couple of terms there in terms of accreditation and that kind of stuff. So Raylib 5 is available. You can also download it in binary format. So if you are working, um, you know, uh, without using Notepad++, you can download one of these particular versions, pre-compiled versions of it for Linux, Mac, Windows, or web, uh, and then, um, you know, configure it that way easily enough. Uh, in terms of features and functionality, the big thing in Raylib 5, and the impressive thing is Raylib 5 is also the 10th year of Raylib being released. So Raylib 1.0 was 10 years ago, which is insane. I've been covering this from the very beginning, and that that is nutty. All right, so the big thing here is an arc re-architecting of the R core. So what they've done is they've split R core up into a number of different modules. R core is basically the stuff that makes Raylib work on a platform, and it hasn't really been split out into different platforms yet. So Raylib with Raylib 5 and community contributors listed here, these three fellows right there, uh, they managed to split it out into uh, different modules. So there was 8,000 lines of code in the single file. It was getting pretty ugly. Adding new um, support for other platforms and such was getting uh, problematic and so on. So now it has all been split out and hopefully the platform split doesn't cause any problems with existing code, but it does make things going forward easier, such as, bum, 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 there is a new SDL backend. So if you would rather try that and Instead of GLFW, uh, which is the current back-end graphics library that is used, you can use SDL2 on the back-end if you wish now. I think this was mostly done as a test bed here. But other platform back-ends here is the Nintendo Switch. Now, this one is a closed-source uh, back-end simply because you um, you can't be public about that. You have to be under an NDA to use uh, Nintendo's licensing and so on. But it does have back-end support available. Uh, unfortunately, it can't be open-sourced due to licensing restrictions, but the new um, core or split up does make this kind of stuff easier for them to do. Uh, there's new spline drawing and evaluation APIs, a new sand pseudo random number generator, RP Rand, uh, automation event system API. So it was first added in Forest Experimental Feature, but it was a bit clumsy. Uh, new system has been redesigned, added as users. The new event automation system users can record input events for later replay. So mostly you would use this for testing tutorials, uh, that kind of stuff there. But basically you can re record gameplay events and play them back. Uh, you can also use it with for creating AI-assisted games if you wished. Uh, and then Ray GUI 4.0. So this is their immediate mode, like I am GUI kind of implementation. Uh, this is for creating UI. So things like dialog boxes, labels, and so on on screen. Well, uh, Ray GUI 4.0 was just released and uh, a bunch of the uh, web examples were refactored in terms of things like the difficulty, uh, making them available. Also, the open graph metadata information has been added to all examples on the web page. So if you are using those web examples, I showed you a couple of those in action earlier on, the experience should be improved. But big, the big, big, big thing here, of course, is this new refactoring behind the scenes, which you're not going to see immediately, but it should have other tangible 
multiple effects throughout. Uh, and there's a whole lot more in the full fat change log if you want to jump into that detail. So things like 16-bit HDR images, SVG loading and scaling support, OMGL ES3 back end. So there's a lot of really big things here as well on top of those core structural changes we saw in Raylib 5. Once again, Raylib 5, I highly recommend this if you're like a C or C++ developer and you're just starting out and you want to do it with games or if you already use those languages and you're looking for a modular self-contained library for doing almost all of the things you need to make games, Raylib is a great choice for you. So if you're looking like kind of low level code focused, uh, Raylib is where it's at. Now on top of that, Raylib itself, um, let's head on back to the website here. Uh, all you need to really know to get up and running with Raylib is this, this cheat sheet. And generally, this is it. This, this is enough documentation, and it really is. To be honest, this combined with the um, the various different examples available in the example category is enough for you to get up and going. So that simplicity is also mwah, chef's kiss. So ladies and gentlemen, that is Raylib 5. Sorry about the delay in reporting on it, but again, better late than never. Have you checked out Raylib? Are you going to check out Raylib? If you do, let me know what you think. If you don't, well, let me know what you think anyways. That's it. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.